In this first episode of Indigo and Green, the peach tree. Join us to make printmaking ink from peach pits, play with peach bark ink, visit a peach tree at a West Philly community garden, meet maker friends for peach cobbler, and talk about the need and plan for more trees in neighborhoods across the city. I'm from Philadelphia. It's a city of trees in a state named for woods. Our streets are named for trees. There's spruce and pine and walnut. There are even streets like cherry and you can even find peach. This year I sought out to know the trees in my neighborhood. Their names and the shape of their leaves and the texture of their bark, how to care for them. And also, I wondered what kind of colors are hidden deep within all their different parts. I started to find that beyond the plant profile, you know, their scientific names, there were all these stories of how we know the trees in our neighborhood. Getting better at tree identification, I was more like building a portrait. These trees are my neighbors and they're growing up and growing old alongside us. They're living beyond our years. They offer us protection from the sun with their shade. They offer us beauty. They're feeding us with their fruit. They are partners in our breath work. We breathe in what they breathe out. They breathe in what we breathe out. And they mark time and the passing of seasons. This may all sound like the poetic sentiments of a tree-loving natural color enthusiast. However, these are also some of the leading reasons why there is a large effort to protect and maintain the trees we currently have and why many are committed to planting more trees to expand the tree canopy across the city. From educational programs and resources from some of our local organizations, I've discovered scores of surveys, scientific studies, and reports showing the benefits of trees and the profound impact having trees can have on our health and well-being, on the temperature in our neighborhood, on the ways we connect with each other in our communities, and on the ecosystems that we are a part of. I've only become more devoted to being a part of this city of trees to tending to our neighbors and ourselves through caring for our green spaces. For more info about tree programs in Philadelphia, here are a few places to start. One day in early spring, we met the peach tree in front of the Warrington Street Garden. Long leaves, early green fruit, and on the ground, peach pits from another season, and fallen fuzzy proto-peaches. Hello, beautiful peach tree. Nice to meet you. I wonder, what magic, what colors might you hold?
some fabric and like a little plain fabric. I don't ever actually know what type of fabric I'm using really. I mean I try to reuse um reuse things so I use a lot of bed sheets. This was a pillowcase actually and then um this has a print uh with like a, like a transparent water-based screen printing ink on it. The little bucket hat here um with a little repetitive stamp print hand printed there. 
So how many stamps is this? So this I, is actually one... just two stamps. Oh, so this one's just two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I do a lot when I'm repeating something is um, you can find ways to like, you don't always need like 20 stamps. Um, you know, you can do with like two and it just kind of like, it takes on a life of its own. I feel like when you're stamping repetitively. This one is a screen print, but the original print is a repetitive stamp print. Um, so you'll see like, they're actually in sections. Um, so you'll see like, this one connects to this one, hmm. connects to this one. Um, so you'll see like re re repetition happening in little chunks. So a lot of them are like chunks of three or like chunks of maybe six. They're just rubber stamps um, that I carved. And then I printed them obsessively over like three sheets of um, like 18 by 24 paper. And then I took those and I transferred those onto the screen print because I wanted to print like massive yardage. And some of this stuff, you know, this is like just the quality of um, of like hand stamping. You know, sometimes you don't get a good uh, you don't get a good print, or like something will lay down. But I kind of like that too because it's like the quality of it's the quality of you hand stamping. You know, sometimes it's just not uniform. Some of them they're just patterns that feel comfortable. Um, so things that I feel are you know like comforting comforting shapes to make. Um, so you see a lot of like this, whatever, I don't even know how I would describe that, but this sort of like fan shape, um, these sort of rounded edges, things like kind of scaling. Um, and those are like comfortable things that I kind of go back to when I don't have something that I'm like really, really trying to do. I would love to figure out a way to not rely on like store-bought inks, but for now, that's what I do. Yeah, I love a tiny roller. Yeah, it's just kind of like a gentle, gentle roll. I really like the sound that it makes when you when you lay it down. It makes like a little. There's <laughs> this kind of box, and in it are my little stamps or the stamps that I'm using currently. Um, and so we've got a, this is what I test on generally. Um, and so these are just sort of like some, you can see also again, like I just have a tendency to repeat things, um, even if it's just me testing to see how something prints. Um, and you'll see like these two were in the hat um, in a similar color. I think I mixed, mixed something um, because I also, I go from home to a studio to other places so I don't always have like tons of inks around so you make do um and you figure out but mm. there's like that guy um and there's so much stuff that you can make these out of too which is kind of what I like about it is like you can anything that you can carve into um this is actually supposed to back a stamp um but I think you could probably carve into it I don't know it's in my box um this is like Actually, based on one time I had a belt, I had one of those, like, it was those gold scale belts. And um, they have the, if you take it apart, which of course I took it apart immediately, bought it, took it apart. Um, and then I, you know, sewed these scales onto other things. Um, but I love the golden scale and that shape just does it for me. So I keep, I keep going back to it. Um, some little like eyeball things, a holy bean. It's got like a little halo just shapes, some, you know, classic eyeballs. What treasure. <laughs> and uh, a couple more of these. This is like, you can see, this is a, <laughs> like sometimes I stamp something so much that um, depending on the material, it'll just fall apart. You could back it. You should probably back it with something if it's a big one and you're stamping excessively. Um, it's like a hard, hard plastic. You can use either side but it's um, smoother to cut into than linoleum. Linoleum mm. is really hard to cut. Um, and I actually, unless I heat the linoleum, I don't like using it. It's not pleasant. Um, but I had these left over from something else. So that's also a lot of what I do is leftover pieces of things. Um, again, I kind of try not to like, I try not to buy things if I can avoid it. This is, um, this is an eraser. I think actually all these are made from, these are erasers. This is like a weird, um, like an easy cut or something. I don't actually like this material because it breaks under pressure and then you gotta glue it back. 
or you know you could be nice <laughs> you could be nicer to them than I am but it's um I think especially when you're hand printing on fabric it's you gotta kind of put a lot of pressure on them but, but yeah that's um those are the items in my bag it's fun because they uh they really change like when you ink them up they just look totally different um and you can see like I don't know, like sometimes I just draw like a shape and then the shape dictates like what gets doodled inside them, like, you know, this mm. thing. But it's, you know, like when you see these two together, like, I don't know, this doesn't come through here as much. So it's always like a surprise when you, you do it and then um, you just see what comes out. Oh, that is just so fantastic and so satisfying. So you can also like, you know, of course you of course you know, but you know. <laughs> but this is also what I like, is it like it just becomes something different the more you um Stamp. It works really well.
You know, if I could also like potentially slow down and do like something that was more more like everything in its correct place, but oh, that's there's good. also something kind of fun about like there's a like just, a rhythm in yeah. it too. become something else. It's like one of those things where you can place it in a million different ways and it just sort of becomes its own thing eventually. This is the part I love is when you like ink it and then suddenly you start to see what it's actually going to look like. Tell me about the repeating patterns and all the repetition. Well, I think it's meditative um, in a way. It's like it goes back to kind of like the most basic thing that we as people do, which is like doodling or like when you're a kid, you're like scribbling. Um, you make things while you're listening. I like the way that pattern like fills up a hole. And I also think that it sort of takes you away from like technique driven or sometimes like content driven work. When I was pregnant with you, I was given a due date of early June. And when early June came, you weren't born. It was just, uh, it kept, weeks went by, weeks went by, and no labor pains and no no baby Nicole. It was crazy. So uh, the due date was uh, about a month off. During that waiting time, I had to amuse myself. I decided to start baking. Peaches were really good that year for some reason, and I recall making lots and lots of peach cobbler. And there's sort of a history in our family. So my mother, your grandma Vera, her father was a fruit peddler during the um, Depression. And grandma said they were never hungry because he would sell the fruit. My grandmother would make all kinds of fruit pies with the bits that he couldn't sell. So that kind of this really does go back to my grandmother. And every time I make a peach cobbler, I'm thinking of your birth. What did I do with all that peach cobbler?
On the next episode of Indigo and Green, Black Walnut. Join me to visit a Germantown Black Walnut tree in Aunt Marjorie's yard, fold and dye reclaimed fabric for a special quilt, and enjoy the sound of the wind blowing through the trees. <laughs>